In Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, the Roper is a large monstrosity that takes on the appearance of a stalagmite or stalactite to hide in plain sight within caverns and caves. When potential prey come close to the Roper, it reveals its true form, long, grasping tendrils, a wide, gaping maw, and a single eye at the center of its face. The Roper has an AC of 20 with 93 hit points and a speed of 10. They have high strength, constitution, and wisdom scores for their level, as well as a plus 6 to perception and a plus 5 to stealth. They have the trait False Appearance, in which while they remain motionless, they're completely indistinguishable from a normal cave formation, so even high perception characters won't see them. They also have the trait Grasping Tendrils. The Roper starts out with six tendrils and can have a maximum of six tendrils at any one time. Each one can be attacked with an AC of 20 and 10 HP. Destroying a tendril doesn't deal damage to the Roper's overall HP, and the Roper automatically regrows one tendril at the start of their turn. Players can also remove a tendril via a DC 15 strength check. The Roper can also spider climb on difficult surfaces without the need for a check, including ceilings, which is why you always check your ceilings. In combat, the Roper makes four tendril attacks, a real action, and a bite attack. The bite deals 4d8 plus 4 piercing damage, a potential of 8 to 36. The tendril has a reach of 50 feet and does not deal damage. Instead, anyone hit by it is grappled and restrained. The real action pulls all creatures currently grappled by the Roper towards it by 25 feet. As a DM, I would play the Roper as a mostly stationary assailant. I would position it on a ceiling or another difficult to reach area of a cave, camouflaged as a stalagmite or a stalactite. Once players are all within striking range of the tendrils, I would have it attack, likely imposing surprise on the entire party. From here, the strategy is insanely simple. The Roper should use tendrils on its turn to grapple as many players as it can, and then use the real action to reel them in, attacking one of the players that's within five feet of it with a bite attack. As a reminder, players can remove tendrils so if a roper starts its turn with only two remaining, it only regrows one, bringing its total number of tendrils to three, and therefore it would only make three tendril attacks instead of four per the stat block. For an added challenge, you can always position your roper on the ceiling above a hazard, such as acid. This way, when players are reeled in towards the roper, they'll get dragged through the danger, softening them up right before they're attacked. The Roper is yet another creature that doesn't have any distinct mythological counterpart. Instead, the inspiration for the Roper likely comes from a mix of sources. One such source could be H.P. Lovecraft, as many of the cave-dwelling creatures with tendrils and strange anatomy in D&D are based on general eldritch horror. Another good source would be the many forgotten science fiction comics, shows, and movies that were popular in the 70s. Many depicted alien life similar to the Roper, as shown in this image, and monsters with tentacles were not uncommon in both fantasy and sci sci-fi media of the time. Since there isn't a direct myth, there really isn't anything to compare. The Roper is another of those D&D monsters that draws inspiration from many sources to create a memorable, if not a bit infamous, creature that could make any adventuring party frightened to delve back into the underground. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like and comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. You can also join the Patreon for $1 a month, link in the description below, to access videos days before they're posted here, as well as other exclusive stuff like short stories, videos, and more. For all of my other content, you can find me on Twitch at Moglaru, YouTube and TikTok at Moglaru Streams, or my website, mwjgilmore.com.